Welcome to the Sea Analysis Podcast. I'm your host, Chaz Nuttycomb, the director of Sea Analysis. Today, I am joined by Delegate Jay Jones from Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, he is running to be the next Attorney General of the Commonwealth of Virginia. He's running against incumbent Attorney General Mark Herring. Uh, Delegate Jones, thank you so much for coming on. Hey, man, thanks for having me. And thank you for pronouncing Norfolk correctly. I really appreciate that. <laughs> so, well, so tell us who you are, a little bit more about your background and why you're running for Attorney General. Yeah, man. Well, look, you know, I'm really proud to be able to trace my lineage back uh, five generations to slaves in the American South. My grandfather was a pioneering civil rights attorney in my hometown of Norfolk, who was forced by Jim Crow to attend law school in the North. And then my father and my uncle uh, integrated in an elementary school uh, back home because my grandfather was so passionate about bringing about equal justice. Um, that legacy has led me to my own public service here in the Commonwealth, in the state legislature, where I led the way to end the death penalty, uh, reform criminal sentencing, and you know fight for reforms that will make police more accountable to citizens. I'm running to be Virginia's first Black Attorney General to capitalize on these conversations happening in our country uh, around policing and our criminal justice system so that we can bring real change to the Commonwealth. I believe that Virginia is at a real turning point in our history, and we've got to elevate different faces, new voices, and fresh perspectives so that we can rise to meet this moment. If we're truly going to move ahead, standing shoulder to shoulder together, uh, on this new Virginia journey, we need an attorney general who's going to be proactive and not reactive and who won't wait to see which way the political winds are blowing to take a stand. And I think that we can unite Virginians around our vision and our values as we chart this new course together. All right. So Virginia has had 47 attorney generals. Uh, of those, which one do you look up to the most and hope to model yourself after? I have a deep amount of respect and love for Mary Sue Terry, who has endorsed our campaign. She was the first female elected statewide in the entire history of this Commonwealth and the last Democrat to hold this office. And having her on our team and having her as a sounding board has been um, really, really wonderful for me. I feel very fortunate that she believes in our energy, our passion, our conviction, our vision. I think she reinvented the office. She's been the, the most progressive and consequential attorney general that we've ever seen. Uh, and I think that, you know, taking her, her sort of model and taking her uh, passion for the office is something that I will sort of look to emulate. Um, but we take that and, and sort of build on it because we are in this new Virginia decade. This is 2021. This isn't the Virginia of 2017, of 2013. It's not the Virginia of my parents' generation. We want to reimagine this old office in a new way. Uh, and so I think, you know, I look up to Mary Sue and I'm fortunate to call her a friend, but I hope to, to do some wonderful and different things with this office when we get elected. What do you say to the Democratic primary voters in Virginia who have largely been satisfied with Mark Herring's performance as attorney general over the last eight years? Why should they choose you over him? Well, look, I'm here as the descendant of slaves and the grandson of civil rights leaders, and I stand as an elected official in the former capital of the Confederacy. I'm sitting in Richmond as we speak. But I often wonder about how they would feel and what they would think about their descendant who has this historic opportunity to be Virginia's first Black attorney general. I'm running because I've seen progress, but I know that there's so much more to do. And as we have these difficult conversations, heart-wrenching conversations around the Derek Chauvin trial, the Karan Nazario video in Windsor, we have an opportunity to really lean into that and create real change in our Commonwealth and our country. I think the primary is about rising to meet this moment and capitalizing on these historic changes. Uh, and we need someone who's got the values and the vision to move our Commonwealth forward and embrace this new Virginia decade. Uh, we wanna lead the way on justice reform and police accountability. And Mark Herring has fallen short on these issues time and time again. He's failed to investigate police shootings in Virginia. He dragged his feet on creating a civil rights office here. And while I fought for police accountability in the state legislature, he stood on the sidelines and didn't say a word. Uh, we need an attorney general who's gonna take a stand on these issues and not wait to see what Twitter or the newspaper or social media says, uh, not bending with the political winds. And again, we wanna reimagine and reorient this attorney general's office to meet this particular moment. Just because things have been done a certain way over the last few years doesn't mean that that's the right way or that's, the that's the, what's gonna meet 
this moment. And I know that we have all of the tools and, cap and capacity uh, to make that a reality here in the Commonwealth. How would you like to see the scope of the Attorney General's office change? Well, you know, look, I really believe that we need a civil rights office that's got full investigatory and enforcement capabilities like you see in the federal level at the Department of Justice. Um, but I think we have an opportunity here to expand the office's reach as it relates to justice reform. And I'll tell you, Chaz, this is personal for me. Uh, you know, my family certainly has been fighting uh, Jim Crow and, and massive, massive incarceration for a long, long time. And we want to deploy those resources in the attorney general's office um, to meet this moment. My, my biggest fear is that we let this historic opportunity slip through our fingers. We want people who are in office who reflect our values, who've got the vision um, to take us where we want to go. And so working with the legislature, I'm proud of the fact that I've got, I think, 35 uh, delegates and senators who have endorsed our campaign, who believe that we have what it takes and working with them will bring about that change. And we will we create uh, an office that is going to be reflective, not only of where we are now, but where we want to go together. So you have accepted the endorsement from uh, Governor Ralph Northam, who had a blackface scandal in February 2019. You called for Northam to resign. And later you said, um, you regretted that decision. In the last debate, when I was watching it, you criticized Herring's blackface scandal. What makes Herring's scandal different from Governor Northam's? Well, Chaz, you know, two years ago, I sat in the Barbara Johns building when the attorney general asked to speak to the Black Caucus on Wednesday morning, and after it's a couple of days later after uh, that weekend, and stood in front of us after he took a piece of paper out uh, from his from his uh, jacket, his aide was standing right behind him. He smoothed that piece of paper out and read the Black Caucus, all 20-something Black legislators in the House and Senate, read us a statement, didn't speak from the heart, read us a statement saying that he apologized and that he had also worn blackface, even in the spite of the fact that he had called for Governor Northam to resign for the same thing, and then proceeded to show no empathy, no compassion, no true feeling about how we felt, right, about how it made us as Black legislators feel, how it made us as Black people feel. I um, mean, it haunts me to this day, because in that moment, I knew that Mark didn't necessarily believe that what he did was wrong. He didn't understand the depth of his actions. He was trying to save himself. And I think that is not what we want in an attorney general. It's not what we want in a public official um, who's going to do things for self-interest, not for the greater good. And you know, that was my problem. And that's my issue with how he handled these things, because it wasn't about how those actions sort of demonstrate themselves and manifest. It was more about how he could find some way to survive politically. How did Governor Northam address the Black Caucus um, when this scandal broke out? Well, you know what, I'd actually gone home for the weekend. And so I was not there when the rest of my fellow caucus members met with the governor. So I can't tell you what he said in those meetings. I can tell you that Ralph and I have had the chance to talk about a lot of things over the course of many years. I've known him for quite some time. And, you know, I think that he understands the pain that, that blackface can cause and, and the conversations that we're now having surrounding race in this Commonwealth, in this country. And I think he'll go down as arguably the most consequential governor that we've ever seen because of his ability to lead and take tough stands and take uh, these positions that will bring about a more equal and just society, abolishing the death penalty, um, leading the way on marijuana, all of the things that we did in the special session last year. I mean, it's a courageous thing to call a special session that's focused on COVID and, and equity, right, and justice reform. Never before have we seen something like that. And so I give him a lot of credit in, in terms of how he will leave the office and the legacy that he'll leave. All right. Uh, what is your stance on qualified immunity? Well, I have been a loud and vocal proponent of ending that practice. Jazz, you might know that that has its roots in um, the Ku Klux Klan or in post-Civil War era. And it's, it's a judicially made doctrine that protects um, you know, bad actors from accountability. What I want, I think what most people want is transparency and accountability. And 
Jeff Bourne and I have sponsored that bill for the last couple of years so that we can end that practice here in Virginia. Sovereign immunity is the sort of state level equivalent. Would love to see some action at the federal level, but you know, it's hard, hard, hard to get them to do anything. Um, you know, certainly under a Biden administration, things look a little bit different, but we could take action at the state level and Jeff and I have been working so hard to do that. And as attorney general, we will use that platform and that pulpit to get it done, um, frankly. What you've seen here in Virginia, whether it's in Spotsylvania with Isaiah Brown, whether it was in Windsor with uh, Lieutenant Nazario, uh, Virginia Beach with Donovan Lynch, you know, those situations are times when the qualified immunity doctrine will get invoked and prevent victims from the redress that they deserve, but also it stifles accountability and transparency. And so we uh, have been working diligently to get something done. I've been disappointed that the attorney general was silent on this issue for many, many months, almost uh, probably years now. Um, I think he said he supported it in the debate, but we would have welcomed him when we were having these conversations during special session and during this last legislative session too. I won't hesitate from taking tough stances. I won't hesitate from, from the tough fights, even when they aren't necessarily politically popular, because you've got to do what's right. Uh, and, and that's something that I will always remain committed to. And as attorney general, I look forward to doing that and to leading the way. Well, that's a great answer to wait into my next question here. Um, if the Commonwealth of Virginia is doing something you disagree with, and they get sued for it, are you going to defend them in court? Well, look, we certainly have an obligation to uphold the law here in Virginia, and I want to make sure that we are trying to do that to the best of our ability when we get elected. That's not to say that there aren't going to be some tough decisions to be made, but and who knows what those might be. Uh, but certainly, you know, I called on the attorney general to stop defending the state in matters that related to the death penalty. I think he finally decided to do that after we called for that. And, you know, who knows what that, what, what the future holds in terms of how we address those situations, but certainly we'll, we'll take the principled stance and we'll do what's right. And we'll put um, Virginians first and we'll put the greater good above all else. So the Virginia parole board is surrounded by scandal right now. Uh, what would you be doing about it if you're the attorney general at this moment? Well, we got to get to the bottom of that situation. Uh, certainly something that has put uh, Virginia in a bad light as it relates to how we are operating. We want to make sure everyone's following procedure and operating above board. Uh, but it's incumbent upon the attorney general to figure out what happened and how we can best um, put the facts out for everybody to examine. Uh, and I think that uh, the governor has done a, a great job in calling for an independent investigation uh, because we owe it to not only uh, the victims and their families, but uh, to the to the general public to have, make sure that our processes are followed and done properly. Um, you know, I think that this has become a, a situation where Republicans have made it into a highly political issue. Uh, and of course, you know, they were looking for any edge to try to win an election. Um, and they're, you know, using that as a political football. But I think at the end of the day, as Attorney General, we will do all we can to find the truth and to figure out what happened and then act accordingly. All right. Delegate Jay Jones, thank you for your time. Uh, where can people learn more about you and your campaign? Well, thank you for having me on, Chaz. I really appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. If you want to find out more about our campaign, you can visit our website, www.jjones.com, J-A-Y-J-O-N-E-S. You can follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. Uh, would love for, to have your support in this Democratic primary. If you've already voted, thank you. If you haven't, please go cast your vote for Jay Jones for Attorney General. I hope you will join us in this journey, uh, in this new Virginia decade, as we create the Virginia that we can be proud of, that is more equitable and just and fair to all people, no matter who you are, where you come from, or what you look like. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, man.